The plans for the center circle stone of, of the medicine wheel honor, honors Mother Earth are corn, beans, and squash. The staple foods known to many native people as the Three Sisters. This is the way they got that name. Beginning our Three Sisters soup, we're beginning to cut our... Squash. Oh. <laughs> squash, that's it. <laughs> Some of them, they're very difficult to cut. Um, and an idea that I've learned, or something that I've learned through, through my years, is if sometimes if you if you microwave them for a little bit, they're, they're not as hard to hmm, okay. cut. Oh, I didn't know. Thank you. And uh, um, when you microwave them, you have to punch them a little bit with a two prong fork or something to put some holes in it so that the steam can escape. And. Uh, so what kind of squash is this? Is it, does it really matter? I usually use a butternut, but this is an acorn. Okay. Uh, another another squash that I've discovered just recently, in the last couple of years, is a buttercup squash, which, which looks very much like an acorn squash, but it tastes... Uh, it's, it's not quite as tough as an acorn, and it tastes sweeter. There were three girls, who happened to be sisters, who never learned how to get along. They were always quarreling, disagreeing, arguing, and criticizing each other. They had very few friends, but they did have relatives in another village, which was a morning's walk away. When they began to wish for conversation and the warmth of other humans, they would visit their relatives. One day they started out toward the other village. Inevitably, it wasn't long before the girls began finding fault with each other. The girls walked and fought most of the morning. An hour before they reached the village of their relatives, they became so loud and angry that the people in the village could hear them. Oh no, they moaned. It's those three sisters. Why do they have to come here? In the village, an old woman came out of her lodge. She stood in front of her lodge waiting. The girls were very involved in their quarreling and they didn't notice the old woman until they were almost at her house. The old woman's stern look startled them. The old grandmother took them into her lodge. Look this way, she instructed as she led them to a window. Tell me what you see in the garden. Tell me how it is out there, urged the old woman. There's tall corn, grandmother, said one of the girls. Its roots are in the earth, and its tassels reach high towards the sun and the wind, and it's growing good food for the people. And there are beans, said the second girl. They're growing with the corn, and their vines wind around the tall corn stalks. I can't tell which plant is holding the other up, but the beans are also growing good food for the people. And the squashes are there too, said the third girl. Their beautiful leaves shade the moist earth to keep the water in, and it helps the corn and the beans to grow. And these vines are also growing good food for the people. You are right, the old grandmother said. All three of you have part of the have told part of the truth, but only when each of you have spoken has the whole story been told. The next addition to, to our, uh, our soup, I'm going to let you do this. Yes, your panel, because they tend to work better for the people at home. Wow. Some days, yes. <laughs> Some days, no. Um, I, uh, I, I, I would like to, one of my things I do, I guess, is to, uh, make things simple as I can, especially uh, when my kids le left to go to, to college, I gave, made them recipes to, uh, that they could put together quickly and cheaply and easily. And so therefore, um, when we come to making a, a Three Sisters soup, we uh, need beans and for a quick addition, 
we use candids. However, the story of the, of the three sisters is that we use corn and, and uh, beans and squash from our garden. Some people don't have that. So this is the, this is the other way. Okay. And uh, true to um, modern ways, it doesn't always work well. I will let you carry on with that. <laughs> Okay, this is bubbling nicely, and I think before I do anything else, though, I like, I think maybe I'm going to whisk these a little bit. Oh, I'll just to do the handy dandy whisker. Remove that. They could just squash, squash up the uh, squa squash, squash, squash up the squash, squash. <laughs> with a fork, uh, just to make it a little bit. Um, Thicker, like it'll, it'll help with the consistency of the of the, of the, of the soup itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we do this just to make the soup a little thicker. It's not completely uh, lumpless, but I think it's good enough. Would you normally make it completely lumpless? No, no, I do it until I get tired. Of it, oh, okay. <laughs> My way of cooking. Well, for me to ask that one, the succotash that I make with the three sisters. Okay, and now we need corn. Like the three sisters growing in the garden, the corn, the beans, and the squash, each of you has a gift for the people. Your gifts will not ripen to their fullness, though, unless you do as the plants do and help each other and grow together. And now she said, <clears throat> I have a gift for you. It is only one gift for the three of you, so you must learn to share. And you must not quarrel over the gift, for it is a reminder of the lessons that you have learned today. Out of a birch bark basket, the old woman drew a belt of wampum beads made of pure white shell. <clears throat> Take this belt with you now. Whenever you are together, or whenever people cannot find harmony with each other, it will give you strength to help them. You will not bicker with each other anymore because every time you do, one of these beads will turn black and spoil the belt. When people see that even you three girls can learn to love and help each other, they will be inspired by your example. That is the story of the three sisters. Using our cardboard first? No. Okay. Now we can we can leave it like that. Now, what the, how do you like your consistency of your soup? Oh, anyways, made for me. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> A little bit of tomato paste. Oh. Now this this is according to. The recipe that I have, and uh, so what is that again? Tomato paste. Uh -huh. It helps with, with the <coughs> consistency a little bit too, just the, 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 the flavor as well. Yeah. I've got some. Um, okay, just gonna go back on the stove and simmer a little bit. So these go in later. I'll put that in now. Mm -hmm. The bay leaf and um, mm -hmm. actually there's mm -hmm. garlic here. Would you like to? I'd be happy to do that. So we put a little bit of celery leaves mm -hmm. and some bay leaf, and we're going to put a little bit, a uh, couple of cloves of gar gar garlic in there as well, and just. Uh, Oh, God, all those that garlic in there would normally be having colds or anything. Wellness soup. This um, basically it, it doesn't have to be simmered very long because the squash is cooked and um, the beans basically are cooked. So, and the corn, it doesn't take long. I mean, it's, it's a matter of heating through with the corn because it. It doesn't take long for that to So I, I think if we let it sim simmer for even 15 minutes, it'd be fine. 
Many people on this continent of Turtle Island will grow, still grow the three sisters together in their gardens, just as their ancestors did in ancient times. Corn, bean, and squash have tremendous culinary and nutritional value. They are the dietary staples of many cultures worldwide. Not only do these plants complement each other when they grow, but they also provide a complete balanced meal when eaten together. It is a wise person who remembers the story of the three, three sisters and the bounty of the Earth Mother they represent. I quite Norma for this very exciting succotus that you've made. Miigwech for the gift of the story of the three sisters and that in telling that story I was beginning to reminisce about and I've been doing this since we were asked about this project and I have talked with my mom about how the three sisters came into my, into my being and it was from my grandma her and, and grandpa both who were these amazing <clears throat> amazing gardeners and Arborous, like they just were so in tune with Mother Nature. So I had that gift on both sides in, in that way. And always in the fall, I remember it being like late August, early September. Grandma and Grandpa would come to our home. Well, it was where we lived by the water during the summer. That was our summer, summer place. And Grandma would brought this dish that was called succotash. And it was so simple, and it was all the things that came together at that time. They all ripened in that season. And I, when I was talking with my mom the other day and telling her what we were doing and, you know, just going through the succotash, and, and Ma was saying there was it was the earliest that you picked the... The, the sweetest of the beans, they were really young, and so they were really tender. Mm. And the squash was just not had the frost yet, but still there was just the beginning hint of the sweetness to it. And with the early corn, it was just... And so what Grandma would do, she, would, she had to clean these beans by hand. We cut the corn off the cob. Um, and the squash cutting, like how you demonstrated there earlier today. I can't give it, um, amounts because we didn't grow up measuring in that way. So you were feeding a family of, gee whiz, then you know, it would be eight or nine people for that meal. So you made that pot big enough. If there was any leftover, it froze really well. Um, we didn't have the teaching of bringing together and goodness in that way. But when I think back about those meals, that's what was there. That's what we felt. Mm -hmm. There was that gift of having done that work and then coming together as, as a community to, uh, to enjoy that which for letting me share that it, it means a lot i haven't i don't know it's been a pretty long time since i've been able to share in that way so yeah. 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 i'm for that